Right, watcher, welcome back. Uh, now following on the other day from the service we did on the Tiger, uh, I had to put the old brake pads back in because the rear ones were just shot completely out and time for replacement. And I've ordered them and the parts have turned up. So here it is, let's tell you a little bit about them. Welcome back. I wanted to make this a little bit, not just of an installation, I wanted to talk a little bit about the pads we've chosen because very many of you ask questions on what stuff we use uh, and to tell a little bit more about it so you can make a judgement because it seems that we have earned your trust and your respect and that you trust the things we say. So what I want to talk about is, is these Jura. I've got myself some EBC H sintered pads. Now they come pretty much as the most highly recommended brakes that you'll buy for your bike, uh, probably because everybody thinks they're the best and everybody tells everybody else that they are the best. And I think there's a lot in Sinter brake pads, uh, the double H pads that we all recommend to each other, the information we all pass on, on forums and so on, and it is just hearsay a lot of the time. So I wanted to kind of dispel a couple of myths and explain a little bit what they are, just very quickly while I'm fitting them. The the sintered pads, though, if you just take the name, a lot of these things you kind of go by reputation and because you hear they're brilliant, you just trust in them and that's great. And that's good and as it should be because we don't normally put each other wrong, do we folks? And when we tell each other on forums and so on what we should do, we usually put each other straight. And often though, there is not much information behind. And I've done a little research and come up with some info which might help you out. And let's just take these out. Right. There's the old pads now, because state of that. That is value for money, literally. Now, these are what I'm talking about. EBC Double H Sintered Brakes. Now these are a copper formulation. Um, easiest way to sort of explain it, if you like, is to talk about what they're, what they're described as, sintered. So if you're interested, and if it bothers you, and if you're inquisitive, what does sintered mean? What does it actually mean when we talk about sintered? It's quite simple. Uh, any sintered compound means the word comes from cinder. Uh, I think it's an old ancient German adaptation of the word cinder. It simply means to take a powdered compound, a dry powder of some kind, usually a metallic compound, and press it together under extreme pressure and heat until it fuses together just short of the melting point. So what we do with Sintered copper is quite simply, that's what a lot of people wonder what this stuff is in a sintered pad. This is literally powdered copper. They take powdered, shredded copper dust, plus a few other compounds, and bond it together under great pressure and make a copper puck. And that's the product. It doesn't actually melt, so it doesn't fuse itself, it doesn't become a liquid or flow. It's just literally a dry compound pressed together. Not really any difference to taking a load of dusty snow and pressing it together to make a really hard snowball. It's practically the same thing. So what you get with this is a copper mixture of copper itself and other compounds to do the job. It's bonded to the actual steel backing by heating the steel backing up so hot, virtually red heat, that that melts just a little bit of copper that touches at the back. So literally it welds or solders it on. So that puck is soldered onto that backing and these are just about the best pads you can get. Now the reason we choose these is pretty straightforward. Um, there are four ratings. Uh, that's the friction rating if you like. That's the amount of grip that that pad has got on the disc, how hard it grips. So the friction ratings, there are four in the braking world, um, E to H, so E, F, G, H. E being kind of real budget cheap like the back brake shoes on your old van and H being the highest. Now when you look at the grip, so that's the amount of pressure that that puts on there, the amount of grip and friction it's got, H is the highest. And they refer to double H quite simply because uh, a race pad for instance, that's an H rated pad, but a race pad is designed to work when the brakes are extremely hot because they're designed to, to, to uh, weather that heat not to work, not to break up, not to fall apart under the extreme heat of braking. Race brakes, have you ever seen them? They can actually glow red. And those pad, normal pads would just fall apart, or copper would just melt. So race pads are great, but in the cold weather, an H-rated race pad is rubbish. They don't grip at all, because they're designed to work only when they're hot. Double H 
means they're designed to be the H rating, the highest rating, when they're hot and when they're cold. So that gives you a great all-round pad that works all the time. So it's quite simple. They're a powdered copper, mixed together, bonded on, and they're great. They work in the cold and the hot, and they're just about the best there is. There are a few wives' tails, but I'm going to get these fitted, and I'll show you about that in a minute. It's bonded in to the calipers. A uh, little trick on here. I've just got to push this. Push the carrier back. It was all greased the other day. So I'm going to push these two back out of the way. You can normally do it just by hand pressure. Not really. You so, didn't have any wheat bits. I didn't have any beat you with wheat bits this morning. So all I'm going to use a big old pair of grips just to get in there and push them back a little bit more. So to protect your caliper on the back, big old lump of cloth and just push them back with the grips. It don't take much because the new pads obviously are very very thick compared to the old knackered ones. And they've got to go back roughly level to the carrier so they're right back out of the way. You can pump them out afterwards. Two hands, give them a good old push back. There we go, right back out of the way. Now there's a couple of people said on the last video that I didn't put any copper slip or copper grease on the back of the pads. Um, I'll show you what that refers to. That refers to this. Now, I choose to use this Loctite. This is not a product placement, I'm just showing you what it is. It's a C5A anti-seize copper. And the reason I use this, quite simply, on the back of the pad, you put a measure of the copper on there. Just like that. I like the thicky, thicky stuff because it doesn't run off when it gets a bit warm. And you're putting on there no more than you might put butter on a biscuit. I think I've said that before. A little bit on there. Spread it in. Right. Purpose of this, quite simply, is to stop the vibration, that high frequency squealing that you get when a pad vibrates. So as that's as it's gripping hold of the disc. Obviously it's juddering as it's trying to grip it. A little bit like when you're a kid and you get wet your finger and you rub it around the top of a glass and you get that singing sound. It's a, it's a high frequency juddering and that's simply that the soft copper grease or anti-seize, whatever you choose to use, the lithium grease will do the same. Anything that doesn't melt, it will absorb that high frequency vibration and stop the squealing. Simple as that. That's all you've got to do. Just a little bit like that. I use the hard stuff because it doesn't melt away quite so easily. It does tend to pick up a little bit of the dust that you get on your brakes and as such all you've got to do is clean them off every now and again like we do. Right, so inside pad on the inside first, back facing out and there's a little spring lives up in there and that spring pushes down on the pad and holds the pins in place. I'm going to push that up there, put the two pins in. We cleaned those the other day in the service put the pins in, push the pad in and that allows the pins to poke through come back a little bit give yourself some gap put the other one in, now the other one fits on there if you've got one of these bikes yours fit whatever way they fit simply push that back in as well and push them all the way home so they grab hold of both pads now somebody very cleverly, one of you pointed out just the other day that I didn't talk up these bolts here, in fact I didn't nip them, I did give them a nip at the end, the torque setting for them is 20 newtons if you're going to do it, um, or 14 I think, what does that equate to, 14 and a half foot pounds, you should got a vacant look from Penny there, it's about 14 and a half foot pounds, which is honestly wrist tight, you don't have to worry them too much, you don't have to be too OCD about that, the pins themselves, they really don't come out, I've never had a pin come out, even when I've been a muppet and I've left them loose, they've never come out of the bike. But they're nipped up like that. Now, just going to make a little gap between them. Pop them on the bike. Not quite enough. Right, it really is essential when you do this to get them right back, to push the pistons right back into their seats completely and then perhaps pump them out a bit, push them in, pump them out so you get that bit of elasticity going. Get them right in to get enough gap and for goodness sake, don't go doing that kind of thing and twisting to try and make the gap because you'll just trash your new pads. Pop them on. There we are. 
that's it. Even where there's a little lip here, they just snapped into place into the recess that these have made because they are quite tight. When you buy these sintered pads, they've got a little bit more meat on them than your general kind of cheap pads, and that makes them just a little bit stiff to get on. But they will go in okay. Right, so last time again, got criticised because I didn't give the torque settings for these. As I said to you just now, the actual pins that go through with a bit of copper slip on them, or lithium grease, or anti seize, or whatever you elect to use, something that's going to stop them seizing in there. But a couple of uh, comments in the last video from people who've found these to be completely seized in. Uh, you can use heat to do that because the caliper is aluminium and that expands faster than the steel of the pin. So you can drown them, obviously take them off, except that you're going to have to strip and rebuild them. Drown them in some sort of uh, anti-seize compound, something like a WD-40 or plus gas or anything like that, that will prevent them, uh, or will, will eat the cack out of them and start to get them freed up. And once you get there, you can then put a drill bit down the center, drill the head off completely and take the two parts of the caliper apart. It isn't difficult, it's just a replenishment job or refurbishment job. <laughs> replenishment is filling something back up, isn't it? <laughs> Must get more words right. Right, there we are. Now, honestly, these are 20 newton meters or about 14 foot pounds, and I always just call that wrist tight. Never ever ever had one of those come out. Uh, a little bit more important on this one these mounting bracket bolts there, 40 newton meters, which is more than it. What is that? I don't know, 40 newton meters is what it is. Just don't use newtons anymore. There it is. 40 is about 29 foot pounds, so it's not a massive amount. It's the sort of thing you put your rear suspension bolts on the Triumph. There we go. They're not much, they're really not. There we go. That's it. Let's double check that. That was it. That was 39. That's it. That's it. There we go. Little clean up, wipe everything down. You've used uh, uh, lots of copper grease on everything. It doesn't hurt now. A little bit of brake clean around there if you want to make it look nice, but as far as the job is concerned, that is it. Sintered metal pads, you know what they are now. If you're going to use them, there is an old wives' tale that they wear the discs more, so I just want to finally say this. Obviously, uh, the soft copper itself, as a metal, is softer than the stainless steel disc, isn't it? Now, that means it's going to wear first, but that's not always the right thinking. Um, it is believed that a soft compound, if enough time goes on, it will wear the discs. And I've found that when I've used sintered pads in the past, I have suffered a little bit more disc wear. However, they are better. With that extra drag or friction rating, you don't need to brake so much. So if you're going to fit sintered pads, adjust your braking accordingly. I don't mean brake late. I don't mean brake like a race bike. I mean brake just a little bit more sparingly. Think ahead. Read the road. Use the brakes when you need them and use the engine braking when you don't. That is also better for fuel economy, tire wear and everything else. So basically, sintered copper double H metal pads, they are just about the best. You reckon, yeah, look good. I'm going to put some in yours as well, as soon as your pants come up, for new change for this too. Okay, there we are. Hope that helps you. Thanks for watching. Ride safe, and see you next time. <laughs>